This is Tommy and welcome to another musical adventure. Today's adventure is a little bit of a follow-up on last week's video uh, where we talked about Record Store Day. And one of the things the Record Store Day people did uh, in the last couple of weeks was put out a sort of a, a wish list, if you will. Like, what would you like to see on Record Store Day? I've always felt like, and Record Store Day's kind of gotten a little better about it, uh, in the last couple of years, I think that's why it's it's managed to continue and be what it is. But one of the aspects of Record Store Day that I've always sort of enjoyed is that uh, it's an opportunity to get some maybe lesser known releases. It's not all mainstream kind of stuff, and and that maybe some stuff that uh, has kind of fallen through the cracks over the years. But you're able to collectors like me or, or fans are able to get our hands on some stuff, and so I've started thinking about that. I thought about a couple of titles that I wouldn't mind seeing some nice, fresh reissues of. Now, when I say nice, fresh reissues, I mean, I mean, I want them done right. I don't want uh, sort of cheap, just digital, like here's a, here's a copy of a CD. I'd like for it to be, be done well, uh, cut by a good mastering engineer, uh, and, and put out correctly. There, there's a lot of labels, and I'm not going to get into that. And again, Politics of Record Store Day aside, th look, this isn't the place to air your grievances. I know there are people that hate Record Store Day, and I get it. Look, it, it, don't watch this video if you don't want to. I'm, I'm talking about reissues. You can relate it to Record Store Day or not. But, you know, at the end of the day, I, just all the arguments about how you hate Record Store Day, look, I've heard them, and I respect your opinion, and it's great, but... There's no need to just air that out here. I, I'm really asking a very specific question in this video. And I like to maybe stay focused on that. Um, so if you want to just, like, for your own sake, if you just hate Record Store Day and you don't want to have anything to do with it, that's great. Say these are things, some things I'd like to see reissued. Maybe that's a better question. Maybe that's my fault I should ask that question. But it's kind of piggybacking on off of the Record Store Day question. Uh, of of things that we'd like to see reissued, uh, and 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 when I say reissued, I'm coming back to this. There's a lot of uh, record labels, and I'm not going to go into them here on this channel. But there are some labels that that I do sort of avoid, like the plague. There there's some with all the records that I own. There's a couple of labels I don't own anything of just because they don't do a good job. Um, I've done the research, and I encourage you to do the research yourself. Um, you know. For some people, it's just about having it on vinyl, and that's great if that's what you want to do. But, I mean, if I'm going to spend 30 or $40 on a reissue, I'd like for it to sound good, for starters. I'd like for it to be, you know, an upgrade of what I've already got. Um, you know, and there are some great mastering engineers, and I'll make the argument that there are some reissues out there that are superior to original issues. Now, I know there's a fact facet of collectors out there or fans that like they only want original copies of albums and that's great get them have them but my idea is to have the music out there for anybody and everybody to enjoy and so having said all that what i want to do is go through a couple of titles that i think would be great candidates for record store day issue uh just you know to have maybe limited quantities of it uh so fans can get a hold of it and uh Maybe perhaps if they do well, you could put them back out. I don't know. I mean, like I said, I just said, you know, the idea is to get this music out there for people. So, that in mind, you guys make your own video. Let me hear what you think. Comment down there. Tell me what you think you want to see reissued. But there's a few titles that have come to mind. And one is a band that uh, I've talked about before here. It's a band called Glass Harp. Uh, they recorded on the DECA label back in the late 60s, early 70s. Um, and, of course, the thing with Glass Harp is that they featured a young guitarist, Phil Kagey, uh, Daniel uh, Daniel Pecchio, and John Safara, the drummer. They were a trio, a power trio, kind of in the vein of uh, maybe like a Cream 
a little bit of a jam rock kind of thing they were doing. And uh, these albums, like, you know, weren't big sellers when they came out. They opened for a few heavy hitters. They only did three studio albums in their lifetime. Um, that was the first one, self-titled. This is the second one. It's called Synergy, also on DECA. And, um, you know, hot playing is what it was about. You know, Power Trio, Phil being just a phenomenal guitarist. Uh, really, really, really talented. Uh, but just a good, good, good band. Uh, and like I said, they opened for a few heavy hitters, bands like the Kinks uh, and stuff like that. They came out of Ohio. And this is the third album. It makes me glad. And what happened was Phil Kagey, um went into, he became a born-again Christian and primarily just followed his faith into making, you know, Christian rock music. Um, and he was one of the early sort of uh, practitioners of that and that genre. Uh, but these albums are really good. Now, there's a little bit of the gospel stuff on here. It's not like heavy-handed or anything like that. But uh, if uh, super great guitar playing is your bag and you love, you know, flashy guitaring, then yeah, Glass Harp is a band that you should definitely check out. Uh, and like I said, these three albums, they've, they've come out on CD, but uh, they've not uh, been reissued on vinyl uh, in any way. I think, I want to say, now I could be very wrong, um, and I may go back after I do this video and, and do some research, but I want to say... There's been a reissue of like some early, early, early recordings that have come out. I, I know that's a fact. Um, some pre-DECA stuff. And, um, but there may be something in the works on, on those albums coming out. So maybe this is it's a wish this granted. But yeah, Glass Harp, I think, is a great example. They're not really a commercial band that's going to see a lot of, you know, people, not, people aren't going to line up early in the morning to buy Glass Harp records. Now, the next one is an album that's not that old. I say not that old. It's about to be 20 years old. And who knows, maybe for the 20th anniversary, uh, it'll be time to, to see a reissue of it. I was lucky enough to get this on vinyl when it first came out. Uh, and now copies go for pretty high prices because this was in the early 2000s, 2004, when this was released. Brian Wilson presents Smile. This was the fully realized Brian Wilson version of the Smile Project. Uh, and so it was a big deal when it was announced he was going to do some live shows uh, in England. He was going to finally finish Smile. Uh, and for fans, it was just like, wow, we were all holding our breath. We weren't sure if it was actually going to happen. Well, they went in the studio and recorded uh, this version of Smile. And it's pretty much been accepted now as the version of, of Smile. Uh, when the Beach Boys did their box set a few years later, uh, they used this as the blueprint for putting it together based on what uh how this was done uh but this is the completed version uh under brian wilson's name uh and uh it's a really i i mean i can't say enough about this album i absolutely adore it i adore this music uh and it never ceases to amaze me but this is ripe for the picking coming up on a 20th anniversary it's about time to see this come back out on vinyl uh, especially for vinyl collectors the Brian Wilson Presents Smile. I think it'd be a good Record Store Day uh, release. And so, and then the last one that I picked uh, was an album that you guys have heard me talk about before uh, on this channel, but I, it's an album that sort of fell through the cracks. But I think it'd be really cool for a label like Light in the Attic or somebody uh, to pick up on this and put it out. But it is The Hot Dogs, Say What You Mean. Uh, this was on the Ardent label, this is uh, Bill Rennie and Greg Reading, uh, two Memphis guys. Uh, I love the front cover here. They're just sitting in their uh, lawn chairs in a, in a light shop, uh, sitting by the fireplace, um, looking kind of cool. <laughs> just chilling out, uh, as you do. This was uh, produced by Terry Manning, uh, released on the Ardent label. So Big Star fans, uh, rejoice. Uh, it's not quite as power poppy as the Big Star album, uh, but yeah, it's in the same vein. And there's a few players here uh, that, that you would recognize. There's another Memphis power pop band called Cargo, uh, Richard Rosebrow. Um, you know, there, there's Carol Manning did the cover. Um, this came out in 1973, 
Uh, and yeah, I mean, it kind of lives in the shadows of the more famous and, and, and sort of popular big star, but there's that beautiful ardent label. Uh, and one of the things you could do on this is, uh, the, um, is do the single and you've heard me talk about the single. They do a version of I walk the line that is absolutely killer. Now this album isn't, I don't know how rare it is. I've, I've seen a couple of them out there in the wild. Uh, it's a fun record. But like I said, just never really, really ever came back around, never saw the light of day. Um, and there's quite a few of these Memphis sort of power pop bands. I mean, you know, Big Star sort of gets all the glory and, and their story has been told so many times. But there are bands like Cargo and, and some of those groups that were floating around Memphis at the time doing sort of rock and roll, melodic rock and roll. And uh, the Hot Dogs, this is an album that's that's right for the picking for... Um, for a reissue. So yeah, those are my picks for albums that came out that haven't been reissued uh, since. And so what do you think? Uh, give me a list of them. Uh, you can comment, make your own video. I prefer you make your own video. If you do make your own video, put it in the comments down there. And you guys know the drill. Hit the subscribe button, the thumbs up, whatever you do. Just do it. Uh, and look, I appreciate everyone. There's been some nice videos that have come out lately with some kind words, uh, and I appreciate that. Uh, and I thank everyone that tunes into the channel, takes time to watch, takes time to comment. Uh, I really do appreciate it. Hey, that's all I've got for now. We'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.